Coach, just, uh, just general impressions uh, from the other night in Cincinnati. Obviously, it was an excellent first half. Things kind of unraveled a bit in the second half. What did you see in that game that maybe continued to trouble you? Well, first, I think we did some good things. Uh, I thought some guys stepped up in the absence of a few of our players and uh, gave some good contributions. I thought we had to be better defensively from the standpoint of getting back in transition. They're a really quick team. They got out. They got trans transition baskets on us on you know a few occasions in the second half and also we got to rebound the ball better I thought those two areas were areas that uh and also play ID without fouling we, we gave them a lot of free throws so those are things we're trying to concentrate on Johnny you guys have had some struggles on the road this year what is there is there anything you could do maybe to try to change things up a little bit to kind of maybe help out I mean you had a better obviously record here at home uh, absolutely we had to keep getting better uh, we have to Play with a little more composure on the road. We were up, you know, in the first half. And, uh, of course, they're going to make a run. They're a very good team, really good program. And uh, they were able to turn it up some more, and uh, we have to be able to meet that challenge. I thought, you know, when they when they turned it up in the second half, you know, we didn't respond to the level that we needed to, and uh, that, that gave them a lot of momentum. Uh, Cincinnati comes here next month. How do you approach that game to bring them? Uh, we have to continue to grow and get better. You know, we still have several weeks. I'm not sure the exact date. I'm only a one game at a time person, but I'm sure it's down the road somewhere. And for us, we need to make sure that we're getting better so that the next time we play, we have a more improved team. Uh, that's the whole thing in this race that we're in. You have to keep getting better, you know, because, you know, through this process, you're either getting better or you're getting worse. So we want to continue to try to improve as we move forward. You mentioned a little earlier you were down two starters. How are Shamari and CJ doing? Uh, both are getting better. Uh, both are still, you know, recovering, but uh, they're improving. Um, um, what's the motivation of your team for the upcoming game? Uh, well, for us, you know, we're excited to, to be able to continue to play and get right back after it. Uh, you know, tough weekend, tough loss, but you know, we have to, you know, we have to regroup. And like I've said all season long, we have to respond. And so that's kind of been a non mantra as we've gone through the this conference play and uh, every game is so good. Every team is really well coached and, and talented. And so you have to regroup and respond when you have setbacks and that's how you grow. Let's talk about it briefly. Ibrahim and Diallo had five fouls in five minutes. How are you coaching him in that moment? What's going on and what, what happened with the sit fouls? Uh, he picked up some tough fouls. Uh, you know, he fouled out really quick. It was one of the players that's fouled out the fastest I've ever coached. Five minutes, five fouls. Uh, but you know you grow from those things. This is what I mean about improvement. You have to look at those situations. What what could I have done better? How to put myself at risk for that? And then you make the improvements. And so in his case, uh, he's a mature player. He understands you know what he needs to do to to not put himself in that position, and to understand his value of our, for our team. You know we can't have him over there sitting next to us. We don't need any more coaches. You know we need guys out there ple competing and playing. And so uh, I think it was a, a big lesson for him and our team. Because, uh, you know, we missed him out there on the floor. Darius Johnson's kind of had some up and down games. What did you see about his performance in that game? And where does he need, where does he need to improve to be more consistent? Well, he just needs to continue to assert himself. Uh, you know, he's gone through some things with, you know, in the family with the death of his grandfather. And I think that that was kind of tough as he's bouncing back from that uh, emotionally. And uh, everybody grieves differently. And so as he's going through this, I think it's just – you know, coming coming out of that is a big part of it. And also just understanding as other guys are starting to emerge on our team, you know, you have to still maintain who you were. You know, he's been one of our leading scorers uh, throughout the season. So as other guys start to emerge, whether it's, you know, Chi-Chi, whether it's Antoine, and as guys are getting more opportunity to play and, and our rotations and the chemistry is starting to change, you know, you still do what you've always done because you're one of the keys that we play off of. And so you, you stay, you know, consistent with who you've been. You got a big game coming up against Baylor. Just what do you know about the uh, the Bears? Uh, you know, really well coached basketball team, uh, talented, talented players. You know, on that roster as well. And uh, you know, it'll be a challenge for us, as, as they all have been in this conference. You know, we have to prepare, understanding that you know we have to do, you know play a forty minute game to have any kind of success. Baylor put us off to a really, really hot, hot start. And during the second half, it seemed that he left the game with some back issues. Is there any update on him and what's going on with his back? 
Uh, you know, he's doing well. I mean, you know, he was you know struggling a little bit during the game, but you know, a day off and, and then continuing to get treatment. And, you know, it's, everybody's going through something this time of year. I mean, we're almost in February. Can you believe that? So uh, everybody's going through things. But he does a great job of taking care of his body, understanding how important rest is, and getting treatment. Um, Baylor's ranked first in points scored per game in the Big 12. How do you guys slow that down? Uh, yeah, I'm sure a lot of teams have been trying to figure that out. Uh, I think what we need to do is we need to concentrate on what we do well and, and that's defend and that's, you know, trying to make it a half court game where, you know, we can kind of lock in defensively and, and play UCF defense. I mean, it's, uh, it's always going to be a challenge no matter what because, like I said, they're, they're well coached, they have terrific talent, and uh, so we have to just be focused when we go out there defensively. Jenny, you have back-to-back games against home games against, you know, ranked teams. How crucial is this week of play for you guys when you look at the big picture of the Big 12? Well, it's important for us, you know, we're at home. I mean, you want to defend your home court. And that's, that's very, very important. And our guys, they understand the magnitude of that. It's very important that, you know, we, we defend, you know, our home. This is Orlando, UCF. This is where we are. And, and we want to make sure we go out there with a winning effort every single time and try to defend our home. I'm sure other teams are doing the same thing in this conference. What I've been able to see, it's been tough for everybody to get out on the road and get wins, you know, and, and it's tough to get them at home. So we got, you have to earn every win that you get in this conference. Uh, and we realize that, and, and we have to approach it that way. Um, what do you think will be the key to win against Baylor, not only on the game, but also mentally for the players? Uh, we have to make sure we execute both defensively and offensively. We have to stay engaged for 40 minutes. You know, the game been played in 20 minutes. The game been played in a half. These are lessons that we're learning as we go through this process you know, with this group. And uh, it's going to take 40 minutes. It's going to take a great effort. You got a chance to earn your 300th win as a head coach at home. What would it mean to you to get the win here in Orlando? Uh, you know what? It'd be great to get this win here in Orlando. And it'd be great to get the win. <laughs> Uh, you know, but, you know, of course, home and, and what this community has meant to us and my family. And, uh, you know, I'm very grateful, like I said, for the opportunities that I've had here and uh, getting a chance to coach the young men and playing in, in coaching for this university. I know Tyler Hendricks was battling an injury and, and missed a stretch of games. I think it might, might have been his first Big 12 game. He got some minutes in the other night at Cincinnati. Just, just what is his progress like and what do you hope to get from him going forward? Well, we know he's a young man that can continue to help us as he as he starts to round into shape. And he was out for an extended period of time. He's back. He's healthy. And I think so you saw him out there. I, I just really like his activity uh, defensively. He makes plays. He's a good rebounder for us. And offensively, you know, he has a good feel for the game as well. So uh, having him back has been good. And he just needs to continue to, to get out there and get more comfortable. But he's a young person that we think can continue to grow and help us in our program. Last game. Jalen and Chi Chi got some very hot starts. And in the second half, it seems like they cooled down. Do you think because of the lack of guys that you had, including Diallo, Walker, and Allen, that they keyed in on them more, which took them away from the game? Well, you know, you know me, I'm not an excuse maker, and we're not an excuse making program. Uh, you still have to find ways to be successful. And, uh, and I think we were trying to do that. Uh, of course, you know, missing a few guys out on the floor never helps you when they're your starters. but. You know, we still could have done a better job of executing. You know, I think we could have done a better job of, of finding those guys in better situations to be to help our team to be successful offensively. And that's where we have to grow at. And so, yeah, absolutely, we'd love to have those guys, you know, in our rotation and, and our starters. But, you know, you still got to find a way to win. Like I said, I think every team is going through something, whether it's player issues from the standpoint of injuries or things going on there or just, you know, rotational issues that you're going through and players, you know, some weeks they're up, some weeks they're down, they're human beings. And so, uh, you know, we have to make sure that our guys understand how we have to play to be successful. Second half, like you said, Jalen, as, as well as, you know, Chi Chi, you know, was, were in positions or we could have put them in better positions to help our team. C.J. Walker, um, I'm pretty sure he played the entire West Virginia game. I know it was, it was said during the broadcast he didn't practice in the game, but he had just been I mean, is he going to be okay? It's just something. You know, I mean, had the injury early in the season. Is just kind of like a minor setback from that? Yeah, we think he's going to be okay. Uh, it's day-to-day -day right now with where he is, but, but he's making progress, and, you know, hopefully, you know, it's, it's something that will be short-lived, you know, really for him. Like, he's been three years. I've watched him you know, battle injuries, that, that's tough. I hate to see that for any player. I think I've mentioned that before. It's the worst thing. 
uh, for these young people who put this time of kind of work in on their game, want to go out and perform for our community, for, for UCF, to not be able to do that is hard. So I'm just hoping for him and, of course, for us selfishly because, of course, he makes us better when he's out there. Johnny, you, you talked a little bit about the Big 12 and how tough a conference it is. You know, I mean, what have, what have you seen so far? And week in and week out, the, the top teams seem to maybe stumble here or there at times by other teams. What, what have you seen from the Big 12 and what's impressed you about it so far? Uh, it, I'd heard, you know, just about, you know, how great a conference it's, it's been and just the parity, you know, every single night that you go out there, you know, you're playing an opponent, there, there can never be a night off. And, and it's been true for us for the seven games that we've played thus far. That's how it's felt. You know, every single game, I think I mentioned it before, it's felt like an NCAA tournament game. You know, I've been, you know, in so many tournaments as a player and as a coach in my career. And, and, uh, and it does feel that way because every atmosphere is like, it's electric like that. You know, every opponent is, like I said, and I think I've mentioned it already here, every opponent's well coached. You know, every team has a lot of talent. So therefore, uh, you know, every possession becomes so important. Previously speaking before, when you talk about the loss of Cincinnati, you were speaking about the defense that has been executed defensively. Well, on the stat sheet, it looks like the offense didn't perform. But would you say that's more like the standard that if you know you can perform at a level successfully at defense, that no matter how your offense plays, you'll be able to come out with a win? Well, I'm not saying you can always come out a win no matter how your offense performs, but you give yourself a chance. The only thing that's consistent in this game is, is how you can defend. You never can control the offense because, you know, I was, you know, you know, played this game, you know, all my life. And some nights that ball just won't go in for you. I don't care what you do. And other nights, you know, you just can't miss no matter what you do. And so it's an interesting game in that regard. And so we always try to tell our guys the one thing you can, you can only control what you can control. And the thing that you can control in this game is how you defend the game plan and how you defend the two things that you can control. And then you have to let it, you know, play out the way it's going to play out. You've gotten out to slow starts most of the season. Uh, the last two games, you both got out to hot starts. What changed this uh, past week in terms of offense? Well, well, I think our guys are, are recognizing what we have to do, you know, to get off to better starts. And uh, part of that is just making sure we come down and just really execute whatever we're doing, you know, whether it's something offensive we were running or whether we're out in transition, understanding the importance of getting what we want and not just settling. And uh, I think our guys are doing a better job of understanding, let's search out let's search out a great opportunity, a great look before we settle. And then not having our, you know, our offense hurt our defense from the standpoint of turning the ball over and giving teams momentum, getting out, getting early, easy baskets is something that we're trying to uh, prevent. All set? All right, guys.